So in this video, we're going to have a little look at Nmap. Uh, we've looked at Nmap previously, but that was through Armitage. Uh, it's slightly different, or well, we're going to look at it in a different light um, through the command line. So it will. It's a completely different way of doing it, but um, it's somewhat easier once you know commands, and it's the way people tend to use it. So Dale will give me a few suggestions on some that he uses. Um, I'm going to use some other common ones as well. Um, but we're not going to go into any huge detail uh, at, or like with different arguments, um, stuff like that. But we will go over the basic ones and ones you are more likely to use. So if we go ahead and if we just do a normal Nmap scan. So if we do uh, nmap 10.0.3.6 and slash 24, we don't have to do dot six on there. We can do a dash zero, dash zero, dot zero. Um, and basically what that will do is, is that will nmap the whole uh, entire slash 24 range. Um, and this, what this will do is we'll do use a TCP sin scan which is the default scan uh, for Nmap. So if we go ahead and do that, it does take a little while. So the, yeah, we're gonna do one and then we'll come back to it in a second. So the Nmap scan has finished. Um, and before we, we go through the results, um, I just wanna, I forgot to mention something earlier, but um, when the scan is going ahead, you can press spacebar or any key. And what will happen is, is you'll, you'll see the progress um, as you can see here, and uh, it, I did it a few times because I was getting impatient. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's something that is quite useful because Nmap scans can take quite a while. So if you remember from the interpreter video, um, we would have seen exactly the same um, services and ports open, um, as it literally did the same thing as what we just did, but just did it through the command line. Um, and yeah, it it will tell you what state it state the port is if it's open, filtered, or closed. Um, well, it will if you do that particular type of scan. In this scan, it will just show the ones that are open, but you can do different flags to show what state they are in. Uh, so th this is just a um typical scan. Like I said, it's it's quick. It it will tell you everything that's on. Um, if it if it finds any if it finds any machine that appears to be there, it will show you that within that range that you set. So in the slash twenty four range, which is two hundred fifty five hosts, two hundred fifty four, two hundred fifty six. Can never remember. Two. I'm going to say two five four two two hundred fifty four. But yeah, it will show you all of them in those uh in that range so another useful flag to use with nmap is a to use a list of ips that maybe you have been given that's from a txt file or if one that you've generated yourself um so i have made one here it's called uh ips.txt um, and it's literally a list of ips ranging from uh one to 100 within the 10.0.3 uh, IP. So if I can show you, uh, and there you go, it's literally just a continuous list of those IPs. So what we do here is we do nmap and then we do dash, oh, dash I capital L, and then we simply go to the directory of our um, list. So because we're in that directory, we just need to do, uh, sorry, ips.txt. And then as there's quite a few IPs in this, um, it will take quite a while. Uh, so yeah, we'll come back once it's finished. So that's finished. Um, it's just, the results are gonna be exactly the same because we're literally using the exact same thing as we did before. But it is more useful to people when say, if you're a pen tester, um, and you've got a list of IPs that you, you, you need to use rather than um, having just doing a range. So with, in a pen test, you, there might be specific uh, IPs that you can't scan. So if you was given a list with all of the IPs that you can scan, um, 
then that would be a useful thing to use. Otherwise, you'll get in big trouble. Uh, so yeah, we we can you can see here that all of these are the this is the same thing as what we got before. Going from having a list of IPs that you can use to import, let's say, into Nmap, let's do the opposite way. So we've got uh, some results and we want to export them to a file of some sort. So we can do this by using the dash OA argument flag. Um, so all we have to do is Nmap dash O a capital A and then what we're going to do is name the text file um, or the file should I say because I'll show you why I'm saying that um, so let's just call it inmap scan and then we do the IP so let's do one where we know it's open so that's 10.0.3.6 and this will, be, this will be done quite quickly because we're just doing the one IP so if we press enter and there we go it did that quite quickly but like i said that's literally just because we did the one ip so if i was to do ls now um it will show us what it exported or generated for us so as you can see here it's exported it into three different file formats it's done it into a gnmap a nmap and a dot xml and you can use those any way you possibly want most people normally use the dot xml but I always assume there's other reasons why people use the other two. Um, but the, the dash OA does it in all of the formats that Nmap can produce. So we're just going to go through three more different flags. We'll go through three, but two of them are different. I'll explain that. So <laughs> if you want to do a single port, we just do Nmap dash P and then we do the port. So say 22, 10 dot... 10.0.3.6 and literally that will just scan that single port like that um it's filtered so you wouldn't we wouldn't have seen it anywhere else uh but if we did uh 443 i think it was that's filtered it was a 445 because it was smb open um yeah you can literally do single ports like that or we can do uh, multiple ports so we can do from let's keep this small so it's quick we could do uh, port 1 to port 20 and it will list all of the ports in in that range that you've made or suggested to it so that's the first one so you, you can scan for UDP ports which takes quite a long time um, but not as half as long as the next one the one i'm going to show you after um but yeah the udp ports take a fairly long time and that's obviously because of the way that udp works um and it's not as quick as what tcp is as it yeah it's it's udp is a wonderful scattered mess um but yeah that's that's why it takes so long is is because it's connectionless and it, it's just just a mess, like I said. But yeah, we, it's a fairly simple um, command. So it's nmap dash s capital U um, and then the IP. So we'll, um, 192, 10.0.6.3. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll wait for this to finish. Um, wow, that was very quick. <laughs> um, and that that doesn't help me really does it that that doesn't well it does because there there wasn't any udp ports open um but if there if if you was to do a whole range uh, slash 24 it would take a while he says so three minutes 21 i mean that's what it says but for the remain the remaining time on um on nmap is can be somewhat sketchy um and with the one of the ones we was doing before it said it would take 40 seconds and that was it took a good it was that was five minutes after i checked um so yeah it's it's not always accurate there is one other one that we're going to look at and 
I have had this running for ages. Um, since the way before I started uh, recording this video, um, and it's yes, <laughs> see. So what this essentially does is it will the dash a flag will detect OS's and services. So it will give you an in-depth um, information of all of the OS's and services that are on that host. Um, and the dash P dash will basically scan every single port um, known. So as you can imagine, that is a lot of ports. That's uh, 65,535 of them. Um, and obviously, the reason why it's taken so long is because some of those ports are UDP ports. Um, and that is essentially why it's taken so long. Um, what I'm going to do is is I will continue waiting for this to finish. Um, and we will come back and see what the results are. So you can see what the, the OS detect does um, and see what services and how in depth it actually goes. Um, but yeah, we we will wait. And when I say we will wait, I will wait. Um, and yeah, we'll come back when it's finished. So the Nmap scan is finished. Um, it took a very long time, um, a bit too long. <laughs> Um, if we look at where um, when I last checked, it had been running for two hours and forty five minutes. Um, so yeah, it it takes a while, just a little while. But the amount of information that you do get from this scan is quite extensive. I mean, it it's it seems to have given us more ports than we had before. Possibly, not too sure. Can't quite remember. I probably should have kept the other ones up. Um. Let's have a look, see, uh, 406, oh, all the way at the top. Um, what was the last one? 10, oh, 243, 135. No, it hasn't. Interesting. But it does, it, what, it does give you more information about what is running on that port. So here it just, uh, let's, let's just cross-reference. Cross uh, on the 5357, uh, it says WSDAPI. Um, and here it, it look it, it's given you the server header um the title if there was one but there, there isn't so it, it gives you versions of what is running whereas on the simple one it doesn't um it goes into a lot more detail uh like the smb mode here um it's it's not a vulnerability as such but it, it will say that this is a known to be bad sort of thing it goes into a lot more detail than what an average, um, just a normal Nmap IP address would give you. Um, but for the three hours that it took, I probably wouldn't use this um, to gather that sort of information. There's a lot more other tools that could do the same thing. So yeah, I, I probably wouldn't use the that particular flag for that for the information we got so that's it for this video if you like the video give us a thumbs up if you dislike the video tell us why and i assume you're going to give us a thumbs down um don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and yeah thank you for watching and uh see you in the next video